Dave Palumbo with Muscle Serpents University. And guys, we're back today. We're going to be talking about a really special boa litter, a double head leopard blood bred to a double head leopard blood. And I got some interesting babies I want to show you. Stay tuned. All right, we're back here. Around my neck, I have a double het leopard blood boa. That's a double recessive, the leopard gene and the blood boa gene. And these are both, uh, these are both dwarf boa genes. And so these boas don't get big. This is a full-grown male. Um, the female I would have out now, she's also really small. She produced a really um, good litter at a very small size in, in a V70 tub, nonetheless. And once again, they're, they're dwarf boas. They come from Central America. They don't get very big. And um, actually, the leopard boa comes from Mexico. But these, these are boas that are going to stay at a relatively moderate size. Great pets if you want. And, and great things are coming out of these Central Americans. I actually don't like crossing them into the Colombian bloodline because really, you know, they get big once you cross them into the Colombian bloodline. This, like I said, is a full-grown male. And the female's not that much bigger than him. But she's a little vicious. She, she likes to bite. She would certainly take a bite out of me while we were doing this. So I want to show you the, the litter, though. I didn't hit the double recessive blood leopard, but I came close, so let's take a look at the babies. Now, I want to show you these, the, um, the variability of Central American boas. It's, it's pretty interesting because, you know, even if you don't have morphs, just the actual locality, you know, and what goes on in Central America can be very variable. You can have lighter, you can have darker, you can have more pattern, less pattern. These were two of the 66% um, pos. 66 Pet leopard bloods that came out of the parents. The parents were 100% to 100%, but once again, these are not visual in any way whatsoever. So we basically got, we call them 66% double head blood leopards. And look at the difference. This one is way, way, way lighter. Um, this one has some weird saddle stuff going on. Now, when you see weird aberrant saddle stuff, that's usually an indicator of the blood gene. So I would, I would probably bet my bottom dollar that this one was at least het blood. Um, and that's a good, because there's no hypogene in here. The hypogene will, will, will mess with the saddles too, but when in the absence of the hypogene, when you have mess, you know, saddles that are a little aberrant, a lot of times that can be due to the blood gene. So these two are, are, are not gene carriers, I mean, are potential gene carriers, but they're not visually, you can't see anything visual in these two. So I just wanted to show you the variability because they are very, very different. So I'm going to put these back. All right, this is a leopard visual leopard bow. I, it's one of my favorite morphs. Or I says she's very dark. Um, is she head blood? Very, very hard to tell. You know, she's a 66% hot bl head blood. Um, look at that red belly. The leopard gene has a lot of red in it. And when you add the hypogene or albino gene, the red seems to come out much, much more. But you can see it peeking through here. There's just a very heavy layer of melanin covering this. When you add a hypogene to it, it takes it off. Um, I don't know what the, what the blood gene might do to it because I haven't seen a visual leopard blood yet. But she's gorgeous. I mean, I just look at that head, that solid head. The leopards have, you know, black eyes usually too. Black eyes are also happen to be something that the bloods have as well. This is, this is, um, this female, I'll probably keep her. She's just, she's gorgeous. I don't know if she's leopard, I don't know if she's going to be head blood or not. It would obviously have to wait to breed her out to find out. But she's just such a nice looking, um, version of a, of a leopard. Some people call this stars and stripes because it looks like a, the stars and stripes on the flag. Uh, I have a second one too we produced. So I have two females. So if anyone's interested, we are going to be putting these up for sale. But I wanted to show you the, the leopard. Now, the other visuals we produced in this pairing, we, we produced a, here. This is a blood, okay, possible het leopard. Obviously, the blood having that red influence in it, um, whether it, there's, you know, I don't know if there's any leopard or het leopard marker. Sometimes we can see little like reverse stripes down the side, but I don't really see anything to indicate that this would be a het leopard. Um, although sometimes the le leopards have the red cheeks. Now here's another, here's another blood that's het for leopard or possible het leopard, 66%. Look, this one's a little redder. And you know, at first when I thought when she, when she came out, I said to myself, maybe she's, maybe she is leopard blood because she's got, some weirdness going on in her belly here, which is pretty cool. But, you know, that's kind of, also you see that in blood a lot. So um, she, I would say she's blood, you know, more than likely het leopard. That, that's 
That's my guess. But you know, the, until like I said, once we won't know until we breed her out, and it's impossible to really tell. But you can see the difference. There's definitely a variability. These are both visual bloods, and this one is definitely a little redder. All right, so this one I would say is more than likely a blood het leopard. Now here's obviously the, the, the leopard, possible het blood, and then we have uh, our two bloods here. And, and, and I have a couple more of these that I produce. So once again, this is an exciting project because I think the blood and leopard gene together are gonna be awesome. When you put the hypo in there, and maybe even albino and stuff like that, it's gonna make it even wackier. So we, we, got, we got a lot of great potential in this project. Um, I'm going to finally be putting these guys up online on Morph Market for sale. It took me a while. I like to get my baby boas to start eating because you know what happens? They don't eat uh, when they're first born. They're very little. They, you know, especially dwarf boas that don't get very big. They can start, you know, regurgitating. They start feeding them too much. So I like to get, you know, at least a couple months worth of meals in them before I get them up to size, and then I start listing them. And I think now they're really healthy. You can see they're biting the, the crap out of my hand. So. <laughs> they're, they're doing well now. If you guys are interested in this project, feel free to contact me at huge285 at AOL.com or through my Facebook at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas or Instagram Palumbo's Pythons. Uh, way too many ways to contact me, unfortunately, or through Morph Market. Uh, once again, hopefully these will be up in a couple weeks. I think you guys are going to really, really like this. This is going to be a great project. And if you know what, if you're looking for Boas that just don't get that big, these are the guys um, that you want to check out, the dwarf boas. I have a few dwarf boa projects. I have my onyx boa project I put up as well. I have also a, a, a plain blood head anery project that is available as well. And uh, I, I'm a little late to, to the game, but even though 2018 is almost over, I got a lot of 2018 babies. For now, though, we're out of time. Uh, I'm Dave Palumbo. I want you to put all your comments below as to what new boa videos you'd like to see and I will put them up, I promise. Breeding season is starting now. Make sure you subscribe, like the video. See you next time.